Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be filming my classroom tour. In case you haven't watched my other videos, I am teaching fifth grade this year. I spent three hard days in the summer setting up my classroom. You can check out my, check out my classroom setup vlog. Um, this video might be quick because I'm actually filming on the Sunday before the first day of school and I actually need to make some copies and I don't want to be here that long. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. All right, so when you walk into the classroom, this is my door. I, I have these signs that I put up and I also just added this reef for decor and I just added my mat. All right, so to the right, I'm actually trying something new this year. Um, I haven't tried this when I taught elementary in the past, but I'm gonna be doing a clip chart. Um, so here I have my, um, all of my class numbers and I'm gonna be clipping down students as needed. I've never been a fan of clip charts, but um, I thought it would be a good way to implement a disciplinary structure so that students are holding themselves accountable but also to see how I can uh, tie it into my fun Fridays so that I'm not taking fun Friday from the entire class so I can go more into that in a second. I move on to the right this board is more so just like all decor and I have a affirmation station so students can check themselves out they can take a word of encouragement at this table I have paper for students tissue um, just basically needs hand sanitizer and this is where I'm going to have my absent folder for the day-to-day -day absences. Coming onto this side of the classroom, I have my my walls for anchor charts, so my math, my ELA, and my writing. So far all I have up is just writing because I like to wait until I get started teaching content before putting up anything else for any, any specific subject. On this wall, I have wall work, which is basically where I will display my students' work. Um, actually, starting on the first day, which is tomorrow, I'm going to be having them do a little coloring activity where I'm going to be displaying their stuff or their work up for back to school night. Underneath that, I have my leveled readers. Um, it's part of our curriculum where they are just separated by unit. and. Um, they're basically just books to help students that need assistance with reading or specific skills or to just practice reading. I have my small group table here, which I plan to use for testing or um, just working with a small group of students. In my cart over there, I mainly just have basic material, whiteboards, markers, calculators, and then just I'm going to put some pencils and pens in there. Here is our science curriculum, history curriculum, extra um, ELA books and then all of the chapters for math. I'm also going to be using a sign out sheet for the bathroom along with bathroom passes. So moving to my desk area, I have a body size mirror over here, a bunch of books that I would like this to be filled eventually, but for now that's a good start. Students can check out books here um, from the classroom library. I have my treasure chest where they can earn rewards, and then this is just my individuals like. These are just my personal supplies that I use. Um, this setup isn't really set. I just kind of put it together for the time being. Like this is all of my TEs, my grave, my fridge, my filing desk, my space. All of this is where I keep the assignments that I'm teaching for the week. Um, before I continue the other two walls, I'm going to show you guys what I have at my students' desks. So at each of their desks, I just started, I just put a whiteboard and I just put welcome to fifth grade along with their first morning work activity and a little pencil pouch. And each of their pencil pouches, they have two bathroom passes, a punch card, erasers, highlighters, glue, pencils, and a whiteboard marker and eraser. Um, with the bathroom pass system, I'm planning to give them two bathroom passes a week and by Friday, if they still have a pass, I'm planning on giving them dojo points um, for keeping their passes and utilizing their own personal time to use the restroom. Inside of their desk, I already set it up. They have their hard books over here on the left and all their soft books on the right with their notebooks, their planner, their folder for homework. Um, so they are all set with all the material that they need to start off the school year. Alright, so here's the front wall. Um, this is 
a space literally I don't know what's going on the walls but I do have student like pictures and notes that I usually keep up in this area I just haven't put them up I have our monthly calendar where I just put the date and I just allow students to see like the calendar for the month I have my math facts 1 through 12 there's six over here and the other six are on the other side I have my noise levels up here and then below that I have my 2D and 3D shapes. Once again, if you've seen my other video, you've seen most of this most of this decor. I just reused everything from my last two classrooms, but I made it just I, I adjusted based on the age of students that I'm teaching. Up here I have the classroom rules. And then I have the other uh, the other six multiplication facts. I have our daily schedule here, and all I put was subjects. I didn't put any times. Um, it could be helpful to have the times, but um, it's a lot to re-edit everything, print everything, spray it down. Like It just seemed like a lot to add the times, and plus times change depending on regular schedule or early release. So I'm just sticking with just the subjects um, because I do have calendar or the schedule printed out in the classroom on the walls, so I'm not worried too much about the times of every event that takes place in the day. I just have it up based on kind of what we're doing for the day. Below that I have hand signals and my fun Friday sign. So just to explain my fun Friday sign, basically starting off at the beginning of the week as the class misbehaves, they lose letters throughout the week. And if they have at least one letter up by Friday, um, after lunch then they will get fun Friday um, once again I'm tying that into my clip chart so if a student is below warning then they will lose out on their fun Friday regardless of if the class gets it or not because I don't feel like it's fair for students to misbehave but still get to be a part of fun activities um, and I also feel like it's not fair for students that did well all week to lose out on activities because they chose to miss because other students chose to misbehave so that's that here I have um, some just more supplies if anyone needs like an extra eraser or pencil I have this question box that I'm not sure if I want to use but I just have it out I only use this so far in my sixth grade class and students would just ask me either personal questions or random questions that they have um, and then I would answer them once a week here are more just random supplies that students can access as needed. Markers, glue sticks, scissors, crayons, things like that. And then the last section of my space is my champs wall. And it's so funny because in my last classroom tour, I got so many people talking about how champs doesn't work and why am I using champs. Well, just to answer that in this video, champs is a um, recommended disciplinary system that our district uses so it's um it's to help engage students in their learning and just kind of keep them accountable for what they should be doing during instruction and so yes i use this entire wall to use that because i feel like it's important to refer to it to see it and for students to know what they should be doing during certain times of the lesson if you don't know what champs stands for it stands for conversation help activity movement participation and success so for example if we're doing a whole group instruction which is the activity a student should raise their hand if they need help they should be at a voice level zero or a voice level three if they're speaking and if um, the movement they should be in their seat and their participation should be focused and to be successful they should understand the goal Lastly, I just have this section here where I have my number line. I plan to put maybe extra student work over here or something to fill this space. I'm not quite sure just yet. I have my student mailboxes and assignment turn-in bins for students to turn their work in. And then after I grade it, I will be putting them back in their mailbox for them to take it home. This also is where I can have students pick up any... Um, like flyers or things that they need to take home. I can just have someone put them in there or I can pass them out that way so I don't have to walk through the entire classroom to do any like passing back of work. And I am planning to add their um, classroom number so to each one so that they know where to go to get their stuff. Um, 
The last section of my wall is basically right next to the door where we entered, and it is just emergency evacuation stuff, um, our class schedule, and that's pretty much it. Important contacts and stuff like that. <sighs> and so that's all for this classroom tour, you guys. Um, once again, this stuff is not new. All I did was maybe add a few things or refix like anything that was damaged. Um, I have recycled my same wallpaper and decor for the past three years. So um, that's why I just kind of re-showing you everything, but how I adapt it from middle school to fifth grade. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments section. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.